bit wet through after walking the dogs and the comeback and the, uh, just been looking over the yesterday's upload which was the first part of the bearings and uh, yeah quite stoked it's uh, it's had more views in the last 24 hours than of any of my videos would get in say a month or more uh, and uh, my subscriber levels just gone over 2,000 so cheers all celebrate rig brew so in the next episode that follows we're going to be finishing off tickling up the lower half of the bearings making the shims up for the top half and then scraping the top off um, as it stands at the moment I have tested the spindle rotating with uh, white spirits as a lubricant I'm just on the final stages of bedding in these uh, lower halves um, I've got it to a stage where I'm I can't get a higher points per inch using the kit that I've got with my technique and uh, one of the suggestions or one of the um, bit of advice I got from uh, a chap called Chris uh, was once you've got it to that stage clean off the bluing add a very small amount of thin oil and then basically run the journals uh, run the bearings so I haven't got thin oil so I'm using white spirits which uh, I think the Americans call mineral spirits but you can it's not bad that is it uh, what he did emphasize was don't let it go dry because you get all sorts of pick up and rubbish and what it's doing is it's kind of um, uh, it's not wearing it away it's flattening out all the peaks And he did say run it both directions as well. So it'll be interesting to see what that does to the actual, whether it shines anything up or not. Interesting that it runs freer. <laughs> it runs freer in the direction it's supposed to go. I should be reassured with that. I think it's by good luck rather than good judgment. I don't know how long you're supposed to do it for either, so I'll uh, give it a bit longer and then I'll bring you back and show you the uh, the result, if we can see anything. So that's after spinning it round with the uh, mineral spirits. Now I believe I'm supposed to just take off those uh, darker spots. Which in theory should be the highest of the high points. A couple on the end of the bearing there otherwise that one's pretty even Oop. I should doink my head on the camera mount and I've right. done, now done three cycles of just nipping the, the peaks off so I'm going to continue that until uh, I'm satisfied that I've done as much as I can do and then move on to the shims and uh, hope you enjoy cheers for now well this is not going to be an easy one to uh, film because the camera is struggling to pick up the black points you can't really see them but uh, I can just pick them out but not with the camera in the way yeah, we'll have to do it from the other side I'm barely removing material.
even if I don't remove every, every little bit of it. The, I think the way it works is the increased loading on that tiny point being so, much softer than the uh, shaft. It's going to bruise it downwards. I actually suspect that firing it up and running it, albeit at a slow speed for 20 minutes, would have probably a better running in effect. But I haven't got the motor mounted yet, all the gearing on the end. That's had four cy six cycles that have uh, taken off the highest of the highs and each one's getting to a stage where it's taking longer and longer to do. I'll have a view that that's, that's alright. It's not as smooth going to the way, which is reversed. Don't know why. You can see that just that little bit extra lubrication just holds it suspended. I can't believe that the oil's as thin as that, but uh, I know it's bloody thin. If you think that common uh, hydraulic fluids, uh, sort of ISO 32 or 64, and what's recommended for this is uh, somewhere between 5 and 8 on the ISO scale. And the bearings are fed with their own oilers, and then there's a, next to the, you can see it down here, you've got the uh, the feed for the uh, gearbox, and it's all the same oil as far as I'm aware. I mean, even if it wasn't, the gearbox would end up contaminated with whatever's in the bearings because it's going to run out both sides. Um, so yeah, I think it's the same oil. Right, shim time. So I'm just checking the lift on the uh, uh, spindle now that it's been scraped in at the bottom. If you remember when we did it originally, and I need to check back through the video and find out where I put the plunger, it was just over three and a half thou, and we're now showing eight and a half. Maybe eight. Which is a lot more than I thought it was going to be, so we might come on stuck with this. As I say, I can't remember exactly where I had the uh, the DTI. I think it was on the actual largest diameter of the spindle. Yeah, it makes no difference. So we've now got 8,000, so that means we've dropped the spindle 5,000. So I think I'm going to pick you up and show you. I was thinking it would be maybe a couple of thou. Um, we're a lot more than that. So I'm now going to stick the shaft in there and check the gear mesh is all alright. Otherwise, uh, we're back to square one. Bit nervous. Well, this has had me scratching my head. It's uh, quite a few months since I took the headstock apart and the spindle wasn't in it because uh, I took that spindle out when we were at, uh, when we were removing the lathe from its uh, original location just to take the weight down because we had to manually lift the head off. And for the life of me, I couldn't work, can't work out how the hell these gears mesh because that one meshes lovely there. 
but that one don't mesh and that one don't mesh and I know that that gear floats at the back here on a spline shaft and engages somewhere along there <laughs> and you know the only bit I've taken apart is that and I've put these on the wrong way round that one should be here and that one should be there I think we'll have to sack the summer shift hey ho oh well that's better so we're engaged there in there and in there um the only other meshing is down here but uh, um that's moved the least these have moved the most uh so i'm very happy that's all right panic over we knew that all along all right so the next job having established that the gear meshing's all right is to basically reduce the gap between the top of the journal and the underside of the bearing cap what is that now we've had it on and check the the rise and we've got eight thou um, that needs to be somewhere in the region of a thou and a half after we've scraped it so we know that we've got let's call it uh, seven thou to come off there you see that yeah come off on the underside of those uh, faces but we then want to put some packers in uh, some shims so that we can actually make some adjustment um, as it runs in um, I need to see what uh, I've got in the way of shims so if if you like I've got if I've got to come off uh, seven thou plus a couple of shims we're going to be in the sort of 10 to 15 thou I'm not going to scrape it I'm going to machine it off if I can problem is it's got these dowels on it which means I've got some other try and get them out or it's going to be a bit of a spine um, to, to basically drop those areas I think they'll sh they'll press out I'll have to see um, and they might press flat or something anyway that's down the line first job is to basically measure the gap and a couple of viewers quite a few in fact on a much earlier video recommended I have a look at a product called plastic gauge uh, which appears to be made in the UK and uh, yeah British made look at that and uh, in advance of Brexit they've uh, provided me with a, a before and after packet which is uh, measures in both millimeters and in uh, Imperial USA inches <laughs> anyway uh, it comes with its own book of destructions and uh, long and the short of it is uh, you stick a piece on to the length of the journal with a bit with some grease clamp the housing back down to the pressure to the torque settings the manufacturer recommends uh, I think that's sort of a slightly shorter white knuckle on the uh, cap heads then you take it all off and you use the gauge to measure how fat the uh, the strip's been squished so that's for the uh, current method of measurement that's in uh, European millimeters it is that way around anyway no sorry that one's in that one's in thousands was no that one is in millimeters I splutter on so you then use this uh, handy printed gauge and you measure the width that the strip of plastic has been squished out to so this one gives you the widths in uh, fractions of a millimeter and then this one's uh, in the event that you want to sell into the US market. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's the next job. So uh, onwards and upwards. And it does say uh, spread it on, stick it on with a bit of uh, grease. I might have gone a bit over the top on the grease front, but uh, it's just got to hold it still, I think, so it doesn't slip. <sighs> Uh, it comes with a range, the ranges of size. This one will measure a thou up to seven thou. Now, given that we reckon we've got ten, uh, eight thou a lift, that uh, could prove problematic. It says cut it to the length and uh, don't really see much point in chopping any off that. Eh? 
It also suggests spraying the top half of the bearing with release agent. Uh, I ain't got any. And it does say that the strips are oil soluble. So if you can't get all the bits off, it won't destroy your engine if you happen to be measuring up. Um, uh -oh. Big ends and one of them. I'm not expecting much compression on this at all. Um, See how it squished it flat, uh, the exception being underneath the hole. So I can now uh, stick my gauge on it. So that gauge is reading 7,000. So it's not far off when I said eight. Perhaps a bit tighter there. So yeah, well, there you go. For the sake of completeness, we'll do the back one as well. And I'm expecting problems trying to get the uh, top half of the cap off on this it do fit snug that's a bit uh, tighter So for the uh, post-Brexit variety, no, sorry, the pre-Brexit, what are we at now? That's around 0 0.1 of a mil. Or 4,000. So that uh, there's a lot more snug. Right, time for lunch. Oh, uh, just weighing up what we're going to machine off these faces. So if you remember on the front one, we've got uh, we measured eighth hour lift and the plastic grip, plastic strip gauge stuff. Give us a seven thou. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is taking off ten thou. So then that will enable me to print on it, and I've then got somewhere between two and three thou of room for shimming it up. That's my thoughts. So I would scrape. I'd scrape to give a print having taken off ten thou. Then I could stick in either a one thou, two thou. Or three thou of um, well, as much as I like, basically, but of shim stock. I've uh, got some brass shim, um, which is just, it's just what I've got. I've got a thou, two thou, three thou, and five thou, and they mic up bob on. So uh, I think there's just about enough to get out what I want. And I've ordered a couple of extra packs for the sake of it. And uh, all I've done in the meantime is basically deburred the sides and I wanted to dig out a surface plate and basically measure up, stick that face down and get a measurement across that and see if, it's, if that's a, a, a parallel face to these two. If not, it means I've got to mess about trying to pack it so that I can get these two so the shape is cutting it like that. What I did notice was if I squeeze the faces, I can get oil coming out from between them. So I've got to be mindful. And 
these things are made up with a, a dovetail which I think runs all the way around and then that they are sort of circled in and um, there's no fixing that I can see um, so I've got to make sure that when I'm cutting it I don't shift it all out and mess up this face so I'm gonna put it clump it in the vise like that on the shaper and cut across as I say probably take off 10 thou uh, I'll have another think about that before I start chopping away at it I've managed to press out the uh, dowel pins they weren't too bad uh, interestingly the uh, sides of the dowel pins I thought they'd be hardened but they're not the soft and you can actually see I don't know, I don't know whether it's, they've scored them up with a file or it's the actual turning marks can you see that as it's showing up uh, yeah and they're all the same um, anyway there's only one that I've found where it's just rubbed down the side for some reason and that was buried inside the met casting so it's been like that for a while and I've kept them basically the two that came out are separate from the other two so I'm just checking that the face I'm intending on mounting it is parallel to the bottom um, and it's within half a thou end to end I mean, there's very little, uh, which means I can sit it on this top face um, in the vice, and the other one's measuring the same as well. So then I can machine off that face and know that it's parallel to that still. All right. Taking two and a half thou for pass, three passes, and then uh, one to look. Very technical. I'm just measuring up to make up the. Uh, brass shims that will sit to give me the running clearance um, the reason I'm making up now is I want to actually be able to have these bearings seated so that instead of there being a gap in it resting on the journal and rocking I want it at least the shim in one side so that I can clamp that down and it will close the gap up but I've got a consistent print each time I don't want it to be going on and rocking as I'm trying to get a, um, a, a, a print because I'll get all sorts of variations in it anyway so what I thought I'd do is just measure them up now obviously one shim isn't going to do all all the faces so I've got to make two different styles of shim um, and I thought well while I'm at it I'll measure just to make sure that the whole centers are the same and they're not and the offsets here differ in your sort of 30 to 40 thou variation which makes it a bit of a pain in the arse uh, so I've got to go and scratch my head now and work out can I actually make one shim that will fit that side or that side um, without making the holes massively oversized because what I don't want is the shims being able to migrate and come into contact with the journal I mean, I've chosen to make them out of brass for the simple reason they're soft. Um, but if I can avoid it getting in contact with the journal, all the better. Um, so the plan is to basically um, 
Oh, is that going to show up? Let me just bring you in. There we go. I'm going to make up um, basically a sandwich plate. Uh, two, two flat plates, holes drilled through for the centres. Um, and then, a, if you like, a, re, a rebate through it or a slot through it. I'll actually make it up as, as two pieces of plate and just put a, a cut on to relieve it. And then the shim will slide in and I'll punch through the holes. Um, that seems to give a much better finish rather than trying to use a punch on a surface and you've got to have enough give on the surface for the punch to be able to cut through but without it turning a bevel and then having to tap, 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 tap. Uh, we'll see how it goes anyway. Um, that's my plan. Uh, my head's full of uh, cold so uh, I shan't be staying out in this cold workshop for long. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Makes it a bit easier and I'm not getting much of a burr on the back. Oh, well, after a series of delays with other things going on, uh, I've started to rough in the top caps, um, starting with the front for no other reason than <coughs> it was nearest. Um, so what I've done is I've cut some shims. Um, I've got a five thou and a three thou, so eight thou. That's sitting it up, but there's still some drag on the spindle shaft as it's rotating. So I know that there's an ink transfer. And that's where I'm, well, this is the second cycle. So you can see I'm picking up ink in the corner here, which is down there, which corresponds with how I had to move the, uh, if you like when I scrape the bottom half, the spindle's gone that way. So what I'm doing is basically roughing it in first and then we'll look at going for contact. As the um, as I take more material off here, I'm going to end up actually creating clearance so then I can take a shim out. Now, as I say, I've got a 5,000 and a 3,000. I suspect I'm going to have to make take the fives out and put another three in. So instead of eight, I've got six. And then just keep working it from there. Um, the plan ultimately is to end up with something in the region of a contact full width and somewhere around sort of half of that radi uh, distance there so maybe sort of across there so that as the tool pressure is pushing in that shaft's going to be pushed up I want it to actually be pushed up into the into the point of the um uh, oil wedge that's being created and the oil wedge should sit somewhere in the region of about three quarters half an inch to three quarters of an inch above the joint line that's my understanding of it uh, and then there'll be basically contact zone where that oil wedge is putting a film over the spindle and uh, lubricating it and then there'll be another sort of clearance wedge clearance here just above this section and below it and then you get another oil wedge filtering around underneath that's the plan so uh yeah we're going to be doing a bit of scratching um i'm probably not going to video much of this because it's terribly tedious having to scrape it take the shims off clean everything off refit the shims put it back in i'll show you one cycle when uh, i'm a bit further down but uh, yeah it's tedious using the shims but if uh, i don't take them off and clean them i run the risk of chips going underneath and then you get a false print and it's uh sets you back just as a additional feet this is the front face of the spindle so it's uh, what's like, towards the chuck 
You can see the pitting on it. Yeah, it's had some corrosion go through. I don't know what's caused that. I wouldn't. Have, I can't. I'm surprised if it's rust, but it's definitely well pitted. That is. Most of that will come out. I think when we uh, get the scraping down a bit. Yeah. Right on. So that's had about, I think it's eight or nine cycles now. Um, and you can see it's progressively moving that way as the alignment comes in. Um, I'm down to three thou shims. So if you like, I've took three thou off this position. I've probably got another three to go uh, from eight. So no, I've took off five thou. God, it's obviously getting tedious. Uh, so yeah, it's coming together slowly. Finish it off tomorrow, hopefully, and do the back. We're down to uh, two thou thick shims now. We started at eight. Uh, we're getting coverage. I mean, it's not great contact, but we're getting coverage now in the whole whole area, with the exception of this. That bit I'm not bothered about. This bit is where that bit of um, pitting is, and it sits on the on the operator side. So it's away from the direction of the spindle. So if you like, it's inverted. So as the spindle comes out here, it's this section on the on the bearing. Um, so I'm not overly fussed about it because it's not a contact, it's not a it's not a surface which is being pushed against. Uh, I would prefer a bit more contact. So what I'm going to be doing now is just taking away the high high spots on this. Um, and increasing the level of contact, which I think will bring in a little bit more around this area. Um, but it's, it's uh, working with two thou thick shims is uh, you sneeze and they crease, and then you're tearing them up trying to get them on and off. So I'm trying to do the scraping now without introducing any contamination onto this face because um, it's not easy getting these on and off because it's a nice snug fit. So yeah. Anyway, I bicker on. Well, I think I'm going to call this done. We've actually now printing with no shims. So we've taken off 8,000, uh, which is more than enough. Um, I'm getting a print over the width that I want. And well, you can see the coverage there. Um, it's 
tried quite tricky getting a decent print. Um, reason being, I'm using very little blue, as you can see. And I'm putting the cap heads in one, two, three, four, and then literally tightening them up. And if I, if I get that tightness slightly wrong, I don't get a print. The reason being, because I've got no packers in there now, I can't clamp it all the way down, or if I do, I can't rotate it until I've taken more off, and I don't actually want to take any more off. Uh, I've done a couple of dry runs where I've cleaned off the ink and then put some uh, white spirit on, just to lubricate it, put the cap on, nipped it so it's I can still rotate, rotated, took it off, and then picked off the uh, polished spots. And that's basically the print after that. So the highest of the highs are off. Um, and that's where, where I'm at now so um, this lowest section where there was that bit of pitting we slowly work, worked away into that um, so I'm, I'm happy that that's good so it's uh, rinse and repeat with the back one now and uh, cut shims print keep, keep printing it until you get full coverage and taking the shims out as you need to um, and the final job will be basically making up some new shims, either a thou, thou and a half, or two thou, up to three thou, depending on how much clearance I think I'm going to need. Um, that's to be decided. And then uh, I've got to find some felting to make the oil wicks. Yeah. So that's the, uh, the finished bearing. That's scraped up now. And I'm happy that I've got good contact over a third of it. And then I've got two pads underneath. Um, so as it sits, that's got no shims under it and the, sp the spindle will, will turn, ignore the knocking, that's the other bearing cap. Um, as soon as I clamp it, it locks it up. So I know that I've got to put shims in here, which is what I was designing it to do. Um, I'm working on the basis of, uh, I'll probably do something like a couple of thou shims, build them up in single, in one thou thick shims. And then as I understand it from things that I've read online, uh, a bearing of this size should have anywhere between one and a half and three thou clearance. Um, so that's, I could start at three and work down or I could start at one and a half and work up. If I start at one and a half and work up, the only time you work it up is when that starts overheating um, and you've got to stop the thing before it goes up the bearing. So uh, I've got to cut some shims and get to that, but as you can tell by the rest of the headstock, we're some way off having power to it. Um, I mentioned the other cap, I haven't scraped that one yet. And you can hear that's rocking because having machined off these faces, it's only going to be touching in sort of the middle section and I don't know whether you can see the the bit of ink that's transferred over is basically from me just pissing around rocking it. So I know that I need three, three or four thou of um, shims under that so I'm going to cut them now and uh, get on with scraping this one to give me a, a good contact. You can see it's picking up. Yeah. Right, that's the rear bearing and that's uh, three cycles. So it's coming in pretty quick. I've still got five five thou shim under it.